I've been interested in mushrooms all my life. I know it sounds weird, but it's actually true. I remember even as a kid asking my mom to take me to the garden center to buy a mushroom grow box, which didn't exist at the time, but it's something I really wanted. I do remember distinctly getting a funny look from the clerk at the garden center and ended up buying a flower instead, but it just wasn't the same. But mushrooms are truly fascinating, and it seems now that the whole world is discovering the same fascination that I discovered years ago. In this video, I wanna take a look back at how we got here how mushrooms have all of a sudden worked their way into the hearts and minds of millions of people and what that means for a mushroom-centric future. A lot of times when you ask a mycophile, hey, how did you get interested in mushrooms? They're gonna answer with one of two names, either Terence McKenna or Paul Stamets. And chances are, if you're watching this video, you know exactly who they are. Both of these icons have had a massive impact and a major influence on bringing mushrooms into the popular culture. So I think it makes sense to start here. Let's first start with Terence McKenna. Terence was an author and an ethnobotanist who wrote and lectured about many things, but he is most well known for his views and his discussions on psychedelics and mind-altering plants. One of his favorite things to talk about, of course, were psilocybin-containing mushrooms, and boy could he ever talk about it. There are countless hours of Terence on YouTube waxing poetically all about mushrooms. He just had a special way of putting words together and explaining things that are really hard to explain, such as the psilocybin mushroom experience. Terence had a great reverence for mushrooms, everything from how they grow to their place in the universe. He actually postulated that that perhaps mushrooms were aliens that came from space down to earth to teach us lessons. The reason I uh, tended to the idea that the mushroom might be an extraterrestrial was because of this weird way in which it approaches you when you take it, that it presents itself as another, as a being with whom you can have a dialogue. Basically, he had this way of characterizing mushrooms to make them seem like so much more than a fungus. Is it the mushroom? Is it just straightforwardly that this thing growing on a cow pie in the pasture somehow has the capacity to unfold itself in my mind and lecture me on quantum physics, art history, geo, you know, the history of the galaxy, the destiny of the species? What is going on there? Terence wrote a book with his brother, Dennis McKenna, all the way back in 1976 called Psilocybin, the Magic Mushroom Grower's Guide. This book outlined a method that they had developed teaching people how to grow these mushrooms on a small scale. This is something that had never really existed before. And for the first time, this knowledge was made available to people on a large scale. Think about it, this book came out obviously way before the internet, so it really was a huge deal and made a massive impact. Terence is also credited with coming up with the stoned ape theory, which is basically this idea that mushrooms, specifically psilocybin mushrooms, are actually responsible for the evolution of human consciousness. It's a pretty crazy theory that admittedly is a little short on evidence, but still it's pretty fun to think about. Terence died in the year 2000 at the age of 53, but his ideas and his lectures live on through cyberspace. If you haven't already, I recommend you go and listen to some of the thousands of hours of lectures that he did on YouTube and let me know what you think in the comments. The other super influential character in the world of mushrooms is of course Paul Stamets and his impact really has been remarkable. It's almost as if mushrooms had commandeered his brain years ago and forced him to spread the message of mushrooms all across the world and he has been super successful at achieving that goal of spreading the awareness of mushrooms. Paul's actually also wrote a number of books all about mushrooms that have had a massive impact. The first was all the way back in 1978 called Psilocybe Mushrooms and Their Allies. This was eventually replaced 18 years later in 1996 with a book called Psilocybin Mushrooms of the World. This book was one of the first and one of the best resources for people looking for those types of mushrooms in the wild. Not only did Paul write the book, but he also discovered a lot of the species that are in the book. This book obviously made it a lot less of a mystery for the people who were looking for these types of mushrooms in the wild, but it also did a lot to just further the general interest 
list of mushrooms in the world. Again, you got to remember this was basically pre-internet, so it was a lot more difficult for people to get this type of information back then. Paul has also published two other books that have had just as big of an impact on the mushroom world. First was the book Growing Gourmet and Medicinal Mushrooms, which was also published in 1996, which is an absolute beast of a book, and it covers absolutely everything you would need to know about the cultivation of gourmet and medicinal mushrooms. This book is super special to me. I remember constantly taking it out from the library as I was growing up. Of course, I eventually got my own copy, which I referenced probably 5 million times, and I still crack it open often. The other super influential book that Paul published is something called Mycelium Running, How Mushrooms Can Save the World, which goes over, among other things, how mushrooms can actually save the world. And although that seems like a pretty reasonable thing to say now, when Paul first wrote the book, the idea of mushrooms saving the world was a bit of a head scratcher. I have talked to countless people who said that it was this book that first sparked their interest in mushrooms, because it was talking about other things, other things that were special about mushrooms other than just psilocybin. It took readers beyond the the scope of magic mushrooms and taught them that all mushrooms are magic, even if they don't contain mind-bending compounds. And Paul has never really lost the spotlight in the world of fungi. He is a complete wizard when it comes to public relations, being featured in countless TV shows, documentaries, podcasts, radio shows, newspapers, everywhere. He gets this publicity because he so eloquently talks about how mushrooms might be able to clean up oil spills, how mushrooms can be used to save your house from being destroyed by turtles termites, and even things like how mushrooms, or specifically mushroom extracts, might be used to save the bees. More recently, Paul has been featured on the Joe Rogan podcast, which obviously has a massive audience, and has also been featured in the recent film Fantastic Fungi. Both of these things together have done an amazing job at teaching people and turning people from mushroom unaware into mushroom evangelists. All of this together has resulted in a lot of people becoming super passionate about mushrooms, and really lighting the spark for a mushroom-loving culture in North America. So what do people do when they're cast under the mushroom spell? Well, of course, they want to connect with other mycophiles and mushroom lovers. Mushroom clubs have always been a great place for people to start if they want to connect with other mushroom lovers. And chances are, if you're in Canada or in the USA, your state or province has a mycological society that you can join for a small fee. There's also a good chance that your local mushroom club has seen some parabolic growth over the last few years. I know for sure here in Alberta, more and more people are interested in mushrooms. Something about being locked down for the last couple years has really incentivized people to want to get out in nature, and mushroom foraging is the absolute best activity for that. The North American Mycological Association actually started way back in 1960, and today has over 90 clubs that are affiliated with it. Which again means if you're located in North America, there's a very good chance that you have a local club and a bunch of mycophiles close to you. But aside from the odd weekend foray, there are are a bunch of other ways that mycophiles can connect. The Telluride Mushroom Festival is probably the biggest shining example of this. It started all the way back in 1981, and although I obviously wasn't at that first one, I was at more recent ones, and I can only imagine it's grown substantially since the first festival. The Telluride Festival includes mushroom lectures, it has mushroom forays, there's keynote speakers, there's mushroom-themed dinners, and of course, there's a parade where everybody dresses up as their favorite mushroom, and dances through the main street. So if you ever needed solid proof that mushroom culture is on the rise, the always sold out Telluride Mushroom Festival is it. Apart from the mycological societies that have been around for decades, the best place for mycophiles to learn about mushrooms and to teach about mushrooms is of course online. And it is kind of the perfect metaphor, right? Because mycelium is kind of the internet of nature and people connect on the actual internet to talk about mycelium. And just like mycelium starts from all these different disparate points and grows through its substrate to connect in one harmonious mass, mushroom culture on the internet has taken a very similar path. One of the early places that mycophiles congregated on the internet was a message board called The Shroomery. The Shroomery has been around since 1997 and not throwing any shade, but it still does kind of look like 90s internet. But I think that's kind of cool and it's still quite active. The site has always been focused on psilocybe species, but back when there was not a lot of great information about growing 
growing mushrooms in general, the part of the message board called Gourmet and Medicinal Mushrooms was actually a great place to learn from some of the pros. And then there's Reddit, which of course has a home for everyone. Say for example, you're interested in photoshopping arms onto birds. Well, then you'd want to join r slash birds with arms. Or say you're really into electric fans. You can check out r slash fans. So in that context, having a subreddit focused on mushrooms is not really that weird at all. And in fact, there are a whole bunch. Take r slash mushroom growers, for example. With less than 1,000 subs in 2015, and I remember being there for the start of this subreddit, it has grown to over 222,000 subscribers. This chart of the growth is super cool to look at because you can see it went entirely parabolic at the start of the lockdowns. I guess more and more people had lots of time on their hands and wanted to learn how to grow mushrooms at home. And it's not just subreddits about growing mushrooms that are growing. There are foraging subs, there's a more sciencey mycology sub, there's even a sub for a mushroom supplement, and believe it or not, there's even a sub for mushrooms gone wild. Reddit is really something. And of course, I gotta mention YouTube. Now, when I first started putting mushroom videos up here, I really honestly thought that nobody would watch them. Turns out that was a lie. Lots of people are joining us here on YouTube and just like mushrooms after a good rain, there's so many channels popping up all of the time. Literally everything from growing mushrooms to podcasts to people sharing their experiences with mushrooms. I really think it's about time that YouTube changed the name to ShroomTube. Either way, if you wanted even more proof that mushroom culture is alive and well and growing fast, it's these online platforms. It's not only the outdoorsy lifestyle of foraging or the satisfaction of watching mushrooms grow that are drawing people into the world of mushrooms. People all over the world are paying more attention to their health and looking for ways to optimize their diets towards a healthier lifestyle. Mushrooms have been used for a long time to promote health and wellness. Take reishi mushroom, for example, which has been used for over 2000 years to promote things like sleep, vitality, and immunity. And although they've been used as remedies and medicines for thousands of years, today some really, really, really cool companies have taken those mushrooms, extracted them properly, and put them in convenient powder or capsule form for you to use. People from all walks of life are now incorporating these ancient practices in a modern way. Putting mushrooms in your coffee might have seemed really weird even just a few short years ago, but now you're seeing mushroom coffee everywhere. And mushroom bars, and mushroom protein powder, and mushroom you name it. And it's not just everyday people. Functional mushrooms or mushrooms for wellness is working its way into the the celebrity world again with celebrities like Gwyneth Paltrow and Kim Kardashian using mushrooms in their skin regimen or skin regimes and celebrities like Blake Shelton talking about lion's mane mushroom. As more and more of these well-known people start talking about mushrooms, this whole idea of mushroom wellness continues to explode. All of this goes to say that mushroom culture is extending broadly into the health and wellness realm. Long gone are the days when mushrooms only come in a can. Long gone are the days when mushrooms were considered void of any nutrition or just something that is empty calories. Mushrooms are now the newest superfood and I am here for it. Now you may have heard of this weird thing called psilocybin being mentioned in the mental health space recently. Psilocybin is of course the psychoactive compound that is found in magic mushrooms and in the last few years the restrictions around researching this compound have lifted substantially. More and more studies are pointing towards the efficacy of psilocybin assisted therapy. They're being used to treat drug resistant depression, addiction, anorexia, and more. Mushrooms and their associated effects are being represented a lot more in pop culture in both positive and negative lights. There is of course also the more clandestine practice of mushrooms being used for recreation and for self-medication. Practices like microdosing have seemingly become commonplace everywhere from Silicon Valley to soccer moms to Wall Street. And in case you're wondering, yes, there is a subreddit for that too. Now that the cultural narrative around psilocybin seems to be shifting more positive, there are lots of startup companies that are looking to build businesses around the legalization and the normalization of psilocybin mushrooms. Some of these startups have million dollars of funding and some of these are already public companies. It is pretty fascinating to see this narrative shift so drastically in recent years. People in general seem to be way more
more open to the potential of psilocybin as a therapeutic agent. A lot of this, of course, has to do with the tireless efforts of people like Rick Doblin over at MAPS, otherwise known as the Multidisciplinary Association of Psychedelic Sciences. But more recently, the book How to Change Your Mind by Michael Pollan addresses many of the topics around psychedelics. In the book, Michael Pollan includes both his research and personal experiences with psilocybin. This book has had a large impact on the public perception around psilocybin mushrooms, and mainly because Michael Pollan has such a history in science-based journalism. What if LSD connects your brain to other dimensions and planes around you? Maybe it does. Maybe it did with your brain. Publications like this book, and of course, things like the documentary Fantastic Fungi, are doing a lot to change the public perception around the therapeutic potential of the mushroom world. Additional hype for these magical little fungi come from the magical little world of Hollywood. Celebrity endorsements or tales of their experience also move the needle in how much attention these mushrooms get. Seth Rogen, Joe Rogan, Mike Tyson, Miley Cyrus, and many others have all shared stories about their transformative experiences with these mushrooms. What you gotta remember is that none of this happened by magic. I sometimes like to think that maybe mushrooms have an agenda and are using their will to impose their influence on the world, but it really comes down to people like you. And that is one of the coolest things about mushrooms. There's so much to learn, so much to share, so much to teach. You could write a book, start a blog, start a YouTube channel, start a mushroom farm, maybe even discover a new species. There's so much blue ocean in the world of mushrooms and you can make a contribution if you so desire. I am super excited about where the world of mushrooms is at today. Again, when I really first got interested in mushrooms, I thought it was a crazy person. Who else could be possibly interested in such a weird and wacky topic. But now I know that there are lots of us out there and I guarantee that there is so much more to come. So if you want a front seat to the mushroom revolution that's happening right before our eyes, be sure to subscribe to this channel for fresh mushroom content weekly. Thanks so much for watching. Do you want to become a functional mushroom expert? I've got just the thing for you. It's a new ebook called Mushroom Powered, the history, the science, and the benefits of the world's most fantastic fungi. At over 130 pages, it's absolutely packed with all the information you need to know to learn about the world's most powerful medicinal mushrooms. And the best part, it's 100% free. You can download it right now. Just click the link in the description, enter your email address, and I will send it to you right away. I hope you love it.